Alright guys, we're back. We got the big ones. And we got more brushes. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. 60 grit, bigger Dremel bits. If I get any of these ones to blow up in my face. Alrighty. I'm trying to give you guys a real time on how long it takes me to get these things done. So, let's try to keep it rolling. It might be a two part episode deal. One other side thing to keep in mind is you can add action to this fish so all we have to do is take this fin and instead of going like this go like this with it and just do the top part like roll this corner around and roll this corner out like that and that will make that fin have its own action for like a balancing effect so just something to keep on keep in mind I'll do that on this one so you guys can kind of see how it turns out when I'm done here It adds a little more dimension. So you kind of see how that fin's kind of got that quick loop to it. Um, makes it a little more unique in each fish as an individual. So, uh, yeah, I'll have to take some of the body out in order to finish that up. But that gives me a general basis on what we're looking at for my fin depth and how how much I need to conical the body to fit that. Um, so I'm going to continue doing that to this top fin. And then I got a little more to take out of the inside here. You can kind of see how much of a difference there is here. So I got to take a little more out of the fin here. And then we start... Once I get this top fin and that one done, we start rounding and shaping the, the tail and going from there. So, um, right now that's the name of the game. It's just taking wood off. <laughs> Don't inhale. <coughs> Anywho, all right, so we kind of got the rough shape of those in. We got the rough thickness of how we want them. We got the little bit of action in both of them. Now, the reason why we haven't done these two yet, this one yet, is because there's actually two of them there. So we're going to have to approach that one a little differently. So we're going to shape the fish now. Just work on trimming it up. 
um, getting the tail sculpted and pretty much from those fins from those fins back I might be way too close for you guys but from those fins back we're going to start shaping this the way this fish is going to look and then then we'll slowly start moving our way towards the face of the fish we'll get these I don't know what they are the lower pectorals um, cut in between here <laughs> I don't like the taste of walnut in this, but uh, we'll get those cut and then sculpted and shaped to form the body and then it will just come together. From here on out, I mean, you see how long it takes, it doesn't take long. Those fins are pretty well ready, they just need a little bit of thinning. But while I'm working on it, in case I drop it, I tend to leave those thicker so that they don't snap off when I'm almost done. Those are usually the, one of the last things I thin up right before I put the, the texture into it. So, but uh, yeah, so just keep on grinding. I am, however, being as this one's starting to fall apart, I'm gonna put on a new one. Don't put them on your workbench, then you think they're still good. That one was just working a little too hard. talking about you get them shitty ones they blow up in your face every once in a great while I get a bad batch the last two ones I got from this hardware store have been bad batches so put the safety glasses back on All right, we're back to work. Got a chance. Dropped you. Got a chance. Had to touch base with the wife. She just got home from work. I'm trying to listen to music and record here. I don't know if it shuts my recording off. No, oh, you guys are still good. At uh, not having that uh, selfie option on your camera. Really sucks. I dropped it the other day when I was mowing, ran it over with the back tires on our mower and it landed perfectly on that camera on the front of my phone. Eh. Oh well. Alright, but yeah, see. See how it's starting to turn out? Starting to shape up pretty good. So <clears throat> this side came out pretty quick. Still got quite a bit to take out. You can kind of see it. I got a little bit more to take out of here. And then, but I'm going to work on contouring this tail now. So. Alrighty. We're about to blow. I think what part of my problem is they tend to work too much with the edges and that's what causes them to pop like that.
for real time. Fish is starting to take shape. I don't know how that looks to you guys, but now I'm getting ready to work on this, splitting this down the middle, and then you can see how I'm starting to already cut the shape I want. And then, uh, yeah, this one's actually kind of trying to become a bluegill. There's just a little too much face here. Round that off just a little bit more, and it's a bluegill. So. It seems like it wants to be a bluegill, so kind of like you gotta let the wood tell you what it wants to do. So um, I'll get it trimmed up a little bit. I really don't want to force something into it, but uh, yeah, it's just the thickness tells me it needs to be a bluegill. The fin structure, pretty close. Crappie bluegill are kind of similar. But it would take nothing to switch the fins out to be in bluegill. So we're going to keep going on it. Like I said, we're going to split this two down. And then uh, work on finish sculpting the head and everything. Oh, oh, this thing's still recording. We're going to try it. All right. Like I said, to do a fish is only about a couple hours of work. Um, but you can kind of see, we got everything pretty well roughly sanded out where we want it at. Um, I'm going to get out some more precision stuff to notch these out a little cleaner. You got to be careful, though, because these things get fragile the more you take off. So I usually generally in this front portion, I try to leave a little bit more meat on there. And then even down into here, I'll just clean it up, but it'll still be attached through here. I've had these break off quite a few times. So, but I think we'll get a crappie out of that. So this is what we're going to switch over to, just a triangular point, it's, it takes a lot of wood off when it starts going so I, you got to be careful with these ones. Um, still trying to find a bigger one of these that rips wood like that, this little triangle one does. But you got pros and cons, I got more control with the sanding than I do when it's just wood flying everywhere.
Now, I know I said I was going to do a Christmas ornament out of this one, but that one's big enough to actually build a base for, an actual pedestal mount on it. It gives you things to play around with. I'll be right back. So I always find like dead heads and I have guys just dropping deer antlers off. I always thought it would be pretty neat to take like a deer antler and like maybe cut it off and make that my base and then I could put a fish here or put one here. Something like that. And then get get it like chasing something but I mean I can mount it all the way into here and then maybe put a smaller fish here that it looks like it's chasing I don't know you guys let me know what you think I got a million ideas and I don't like doing them all the same it's easier to carve a hundred of these and then uh, do lily pads like I'll put a link I'll see if I can figure it out how to put a link in there to the one I did for Trapper J or I'll tag a photo on the end of some of the ones I've done with lily pads, but the lily pads are easy to punch out. Um, and I'm getting pretty good at making them, so they go together pretty quick. Or hell, just a flat, flat block with a stick in it. I mean, you don't have to be too, you're, you're advertising the fish, not so much everything around it. That's all bonus, so. Let me know what you think. I'll get back to work now. Okay. So you can kind of see that gets a little bit deeper detail in there. Not perfect, but I'll go back with the hand sand all that. I'm going to get the little sander out here and clean this up. This doesn't have to be too perfect because that's where you're going to mount your fish and a lot of times there's structure around that so you'll lose that anyhow. Now's here's where you get a little more detailed. I'm starting to define some lines. I'm gonna make sure I get my my shape of my fish down here. Um, like putting in these lines. I'll do the same thing on this side. I want to really concentrate on the shape of the fish now and get these get it all cleaned up, getting ready for a. Uh, for the detail, so yeah. But yeah, so we'll cut these in. We'll get this this cut in a little bit. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna start getting those cut in. Thin up these fins a little bit more. These two are pretty well done. Um, then the next thing will be is once we get these all thinned down where we want them at. Uh, then we start. Then we start working on putting the drawing the detail into the face so that we could cut it out with our discs. Um, so. We'll get those done, and then after we get all that done, the detailing, like, the, like I said, the cleaning up of these lines, get the face sculpted in, and then uh, I think I'll wait to cut the lines into here to make it look like the scale, of, I don't know what the hell you call them, the ribs and the, uh, the fins. Wait to do that until we mount the, 
the pectorals that I still have to put on here. So, like I said, guys, it doesn't take long to knock out a fish. I know I've told a couple people that it takes me about four hours to do a fish and a stand, and people are like, what? So, yeah, it doesn't take too long. This, the uh, band saw and scroll saw really cut down a lot of the... Yeah, if I was starting from a block and had none of this stuff, I've done it. It sucks. Um, one, I wouldn't be using a hardwood. Uh, I'd be using more of your cedars, your pines, hell, even just a 2x4. I've done a fish out of just a 2x4 stud, and it turns out good. Um, I think if I was going to make a career out of doing just 2x4 wood, um, regular pine, I'd probably be starting to paint them. But as it is, with, that's why I use the hardwoods and uh, some of the fruit woods. Um, I just look for really good grain patterns and colorizations. So... Uh, <clears throat> um yeah because then that the yeah, wood itself accents itself so all right i'm gonna keep going on this and then uh yeah i'll stop next time I, i'm ready for the next step This fish is going to have some really, really nice grains on it. I'm half tempted to show you real quick. I mean, I don't know if you could see them. This will be the display side, because that's the side you want to see. But you can see the grain patterns right here. The one you got to worry about is when the grain pattern cuts like this across this tail. This is super fragile areas right here. So, um, but this fish is pretty well ready for um, the face. But unfortunately, I'm going to draw this in, but I'm going to shut you guys off so I can pull up my Google and make sure I do it right. I got to get a picture of it. All right, well, I'll get back here in a second when it's drawn on. Alright guys, we're back. So this is a rough idea. I messed up on the eyeball a little bit. Um, this is a better idea. But yeah, we're going to stick with the crappie. So, we rough draw it, and then we get the uh, Dremel disc stuff like this. That might be a little bit much for it, but uh, we'll get something like that going to make our lines. They're not going to be exactly that because I'm working, I'm working with uh, a flat line. I'm working with a flat line for the most part there. So, all right. thinner one that'll be what we use
All right, so when you're doing these lines, you want to cut them deep enough because we're going to come in here and grind these down a little bit more so it's like staged, so it's like a stair step effect to them. And uh, yeah, we're going to do that right now, but I'm going to switch over to uh, 220 grit sandpaper um, just because that's going to be our finished touch on that. small ones and that's where you want them at so we're just gonna do <clears throat> do the big ones we'll just take our time here and just take a just take a little bit more patience with the big one um, 220 grit again this is 220 grit Okay, this walnut doesn't like the 220 grit sandpaper. It just was too coarse of a, too hard of a wood for this soft stuff. So we're gonna go. The problem is, is now I'm gonna have to sand everything by hand. Oh well, name of the game. Okay, so just kind of it cleaned up a little bit. I ran some channels here. I don't know if you guys could see them, but there's channels right in here. And that's usually, if you know the anatomy of a fish, usually they have those and that kind of helps them uh, locate their meals, what they're, whatever they're about to eat. Really, this stuff helps a lot more if you've ever handled the fish that you're carving, because then you have, if you pay attention, you know kind of the anatomy. I mean, you got a hold of it, so. One of these days, those things are going to catch on fire. Well, yeah, just to kind of show you how I do it, I'm going to get these extra fins done real quick. So you can kind of see. All I do is I take my grinding disc that I have here, and I just run them like this. Whoop, 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 whoop. And I do that, and sometimes I'll come back and just change the degree of the angle just a little bit and go back over it. And what that does, it makes it look like it's stacked in there, like there's a lot of them. <laughs> but this one will be... All I have to do is get the fins going, and this thing's ready to 
get hand sanded and I'll do that and then uh, I'll make some fins for it. <coughs> Pardon me, a lot of dust were kicking up here. Okay, so there's that. So, when you're doing that, don't worry about going into the fish's carcass or part body part because we can we left enough there, and that's when you got to think of those steps. And if you leave enough there, we can just we'll hit it with the sander again, clean that up, knock it down, get rid of it, round the tail off like they have those the meaty part of their tail that ties into the the fin portion. But just like back that, man, that one's ready for fins and just to be put away. So, um, yeah, so that's about it. There's not much more to it. Just cutting the fins and, uh, if you want, I can show you how to do that too. Whoop. That one doesn't want to come out for there. Did have to put a different one together there. And I got multiple of those.
All right. So that's going to be my finished show side. You let me know. It seemed a little long in the face area here for me to think it's a... It's a crappie, but... That's what we're going to say it is. So you let me know in the comments what you think it is. And if you like it, subscribe. But yeah, that's going to look good. Alright, well, I'm not going to bore you. You guys get the basic principles. Um... When it comes down to it, I'll probably make another video of how to pin them and everything. How to pin the that and how I build the landscapes and stuff. But it's all tedious. I mean, you could, I don't know if you guys like it or not, but let me know. I'm going to keep this raw footage, wife, kids, everybody coming in. Um, I mean, I'll just do a two-part deal. So if any luck, this should be part two. Um... Let me know. I'll check the time, but I'm pretty sure I'm right at that two-hour mark. So, yeah, that take me another 15 minutes to pin the fins, cut and pin the fins. So I'm probably about two and a half hours, and it wouldn't take me much about the same to build a pedestal and everything for it. But we're not going to bore you with that today. This is just going to be a trial run to see if you guys like this or if you want me to keep staying with the trap and stuff. I mean, I did order stuff to make snares. Um, I just ordered the wrong cable. So I'm just waiting on the right cable to show up. And uh, then we'll be doing videos on that. Um, plan on pumping out a lot. I ordered a 500 foot roll of cable. So, uh, yeah. I'll keep you guys in the loop. I'm going to try to start doing more videos since I'm starting to get more subscribers. Uh, try to give you guys some daily up stuff but I don't know if it'll be daily or weekly but we'll go from there so my phone's going off I hear it in my ear that's why I paused there but, uh. all right well also if anything I'll do a video of me putting everything together for you guys I'll build the landscape and I'll cause you gotta pin it all and glue it all so you might as well do it all at once so um, then we finish it ready for hand sand this part of it's ready for hand sanding yeah, I talk too much, so. Alright, we'll uh, get to see you in part three of this. Alright, bye.